Good morning. I'm Pastor Greg Fetzer. I'm Pastor Teal Anderson. Welcome to this service of the word for this 50th day in the season of Easter, Pentecost Sunday. A couple of announcements before we begin. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to download the worship bulletin. You can find that on our website at lcgselca.org. Again, please download that, participate in the service with us today. A couple of other announcements are VBS, our virtual vacation Bible school for this year. Registration is available. Again, you can find that on our website, lcgselca.org. If you are watching this at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning, immediately after, Pastor Teal will have a prayer time where you can live stream comments of prayers. We would ask you only use people's first name for confidentiality, uh, but Pastor Teal will be leading in a prayer time, again, immediately after this service, as it begins 9 o'clock in the morning. Finally, I'd like to give thanks to some folks. Uh, hopefully you've noticed our sound has improved this week. Thanks to a lot of hard work by Sean Nesaw, Greg Garbinski, and Angela Crom. Uh, we think we have this figured out. So again, hope the, the audio is good this week. I will hand it over to Angela for the prelude. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on, on this day you, you open the hearts of your faithful people into, into us, your Holy Spirit. Spirit. Direct, Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all, in all things, and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they ask, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine." But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what it was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, 
and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. see that you have your headband there with a little flame a paper flame on top so what's that about Freddie well today we hear the story of Pentecost um, in the book book of Acts that's right it's in the book of Acts and I like the the line in there where they had tongues of flame on them ah so you made your little headband with a, a paper flame there I see that yeah I thought I'd play along isn't that what they did well, no, they didn't run around screaming they were on fire, but they did have the, the tongues of flame on them. What, why the fire? Why, why do you think they had tongues of flame on their head? Oh, well, that's a good question. I think because a lot of times in the Bible, when we hear about fire, usually that means that God is present. God is there. Oh, so God was with them that day. That's right, and I like you're wearing your flame because we know God is with us even today. It might not be that first Pentecost, but it is a Pentecost Sunday, and we celebrate God coming in the person of the Holy Spirit. God is present, and I think the flame represented that. Oh, I, I can think of another time. Really, what, what's, when's another time? When Moses, um, when God talked to Moses in the burning bush. That's right, God was present with Moses. And we think about our Jewish brothers and sisters today as they finish up one of their festivals around this time of the year. Oh, they remember when God gave to them the law, the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. Oh, so, so I can still play, you can still play, but I'll remember that um, God is often present in, in the Bible in fire and God is present with us always. That's a good thing to remember. All right. Again, blessed Pentecost to you, and happy birthday as we celebrate the birthday of the Christian church. The Christian festival of Pentecost has its roots in the Jewish festival of Shavuot. Now, this ancient festival, which is still celebrated today, has two basic meanings. First, it is a celebration of the spring early summer harvest in the land of Israel. So the people often give sheaves of wheat as thanksgiving to God. But it is also a commemoration of God giving the Ten Commandments, the law, to Moses on Mount Sinai. Now that's why there were folks gathered in Jerusalem in our story we hear today. Jews from all over the known world would come in pilgrimage to Jerusalem, they would celebrate. The story tells us that on that first Pentecost day, God came in a new way as the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples, the apostles gathered, formed them into the body of Christ, into the Christian church. Who is this Holy Spirit? 
As we think about that first Pentecost and we think about our celebration of Pentecost each and every year, who is the Spirit? Well, we know the Spirit as the third person of the Holy Trinity. Athanasius would remind us in his creed that as a person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit is uncreated, immeasurable, eternal. The Holy Spirit is the Lord our God. But the Spirit can seem elusive, can it not? Like the air we breathe, the sunbeams on our face. How do we grasp an understanding of who is this Spirit? Perhaps the Spirit is hard to describe. Let's focus today on what the Spirit does. How does the Spirit function for us in a life of faith? Well, I want to turn today to the words of Martin Luther. In his explanation of the third article of the Creed, the Creed dealing with the Holy Spirit in his small catechism, Martin Luther writes this. I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength Believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel. Enlightened me with God's gifts. Sanctified and kept me in the true faith. Even as God calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth. And keeps it with Jesus in the one true faith. Powerful verbs, powerful action words as we think of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the triune God, acting in us, acting in our lives as believers. Let's take the first word, calls. The Holy Spirit calls us. When I try to wrap my head around the Christian's calling, I often am thinking of the words of Frederick Buechner. He writes about vocation, that vocation comes from the Latin vocare, which means to call. And thus a vocation is the work one is called to by God. He goes on to write, the kind of work godly, God usually calls us to is the kind of work that A, we need most to do, and B, that the world most needs to have done. Then he goes on to write, the place God calls us to is the place where our deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. In the spirit as the Spirit calls us, God offers to us in the, light, in the work of this life a divine purpose. God extends to us an invitation to participate in the building of the kingdom of earth, or kingdom of heaven here on earth, the kingdom of God in our midst. And if we can understand our calling, our work that God calls us to in this light, It's not just another to-do item on our list, not just another thing we need to check or cross off. We understand when we are called and we participate in this kingdom-building enterprise, it has eternal ramifications. What we do now helps to build the eternal kingdom of God. So we are called to that work, and we are gathered by the Holy Spirit. Quite often we say we gather for worship. I like to remind folks that it is not, in fact, we are gathering. It is a passive verb on our part. We are gathered. We come to worship because the Spirit urges us in faith. You watching this service means that the Spirit has already acted in your life. And our profound prayer is that God will work mightily through this experience, that your faith might be strengthened. 
But make no mistake, it is the Spirit that has gathered us. And in a deeper sense, the Spirit's gathering is the creative work of the body of Christ, of the church, of each and every congregation. The Spirit has built that as the body of Christ. During this time of social distancing, of home isolation, church leaders have pointed out again and again Most recently, this last week, our presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton remind us the church has not been closed during this time. Now, facilities in the building might be closed, but the church, that is the body of Christ, that is you and me as fellow believers, the church is open for business. We have been continuing to meet for worship. We have been continuing to lift our voices in prayer. We have continued to serve one another as God in Christ has served us. The church hasn't closed, nor will the church ever close. I've taken to reminding folks these last couple of weeks, as bad as this COVID uh, virus crisis is, the church has survived much worse. We are told that the gates of hell will not prevail upon the church. God in the Spirit has gathered us, and nothing will disperse us permanently. So as God calls and gathers the church, so God, through the Spirit, enlightens the church. Now we can think of this enlightening in several different ways. First is the idea of revelation. God chooses to reveal God's self to the faithful believer. Secondly, enlightenment can be understood as wisdom. St. Paul writes that God's wisdom seems like foolishness to the world. That is, God's wisdom that the Messiah should come and suffer death seems like a foolish thing from the human perspective. But it is the wisdom of God for the death of Christ has led to our salvation. Fourthly, as Martin Luther would remind us in his explanation of the third article of the Creed, the Holy Spirit sanctifies. Now, to sanctify means to make holy, to purify. God is righteous and holy and true. We so often are not. But the life of faith is one striving to become more godly. Or through the Christian lens, through the lens of faith, to become more Christ-like. Again, some other words are Martin Luther. He writes, this life is not godliness, but growth in godliness. Not health, but healing. Not being, but becoming. Not rest but exercise we are not now what we shall be but we are on the way the process is not yet finished but it has begun this is not the goal but it is the road at present all does not gleam and glitter but everything is being purified That's the Spirit sanctifying our lives. We are on the way. The process is not yet finished. God is not done with us yet. There is much to do in our own lives to attain God's goals for us. There is much to do in our neighborhoods, our communities, our culture. We are not there yet. And as we mourn this past week, the death of George Floyd, and we see the horrible scene in Central Park, the harassment of Christian Cooper, we are reminded just how much work there is to do that the kingdom of heaven might be manifest here on earth. We're all people are understood to be created in the image of God. 
where all people have worth and value. This calling, gathering, enlightening, and sanctifying process, that begins in our baptism. In our baptism where we are claimed and named as God's own children. It's in baptism our calling begins. We pledge, or those who sponsor us pledge, that in our life of faith we will answer the calling to proclaim Christ through word and deed. To care for others and the world that God made. To work for justice and peace. And remember, when we are baptized, we are baptized into a family, into the community, into the body of Christ. Baptism is not a solo act. And when we gather, we pledge to pray for and support the new Christian in their life of faith. We're all in this together. In our baptism, we are also enlightened with God's gifts. Remember that part of the service where the pastor will lay his or her hands upon the child or perhaps the adult and pray that the Spirit would stir up wisdom. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord might be with this new child of God. In our baptism, we are washed free from sin and given new life. We begin a lifelong holy partnership with God and with God's people, a process of sanctification to attain some level of holiness in our life by the grace of God. We are separated during this time. We are worshiping virtually, gathering for prayer groups virtually. Sometimes we may connect faith to faith, but it is always distant. And I know I have heard as the church we are yearning to gather again here in this place. And we are longing to share again Holy Communion been forced by this situation to fast from this sacrament. We yearn to again experience God present in, with, and under the bread and wine in the person of Jesus Christ. But I would remind you there is a sacrament in which you can participate even now. Each and every day we are called to remember our baptism, to call upon our baptismal faith, each and every day we return to that promise that God made with us. God is with us now and will be for all eternity. I would invite you at home throughout the week. Remember to make the sign of the cross, perhaps this way. Or you can even dip your finger in water and trace the cross on your forehead and live wet. Claim that I am baptized. Claim I am called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified by the Holy Spirit of God. This Pentecost Sunday and all the days of our lives. Amen.
us our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity giving thanks for our different vocations, activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. We pray for bishops Elizabeth Eaton and William Gole. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever our communities are broken by violence or systemic evil, heal us. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. We pray for President Donald Trump, Governor Larry Hogan, and all who serve in government. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort, especially Trudy, Betsy, Bonnie, Eric, Joan, Don, Phyllis, Sylvia, Elsie Marie, Patricia, Lowell, Harry, Jean, Betty, Karen, Juanita, Debbie, Lois, David, Bruce, Barbara, Eric, Kimberly, Tommy, and Jackie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of friendship. Give us a spirit for caring, give us a spirit of caring to connect with our neighbors amid this time while we are in so many ways isolated. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace that we rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of hope. As you have led your saints in all times and places, stir, us in, the, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. As we share the peace with one another, perhaps at home, again, I thank you for your generous contributions to the support the ministry of this congregation. There are three ways to continue to support. You can give through the mail. We still have people uh, checking the mailbox on a regular basis. There are some e-giving options, including um, a link on our website, lcgselca.org. You can follow that link and donate that way. Also, you can text the word GIVE to 410-673-4483. And finally, you can participate in the bill pay program with your local bank. Again, thank you. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and, and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. evil. For, For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the, and the glory, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Now that has its ancient, I'm going to start over. <laughs> this is the last time I'll do this, I promise. <laughs> 